with me. I have a couple of things I want to get through really fast. So first of all, I am going to have some flying objects. So they're really soft and they're really fuzzy, but I'm just warning you, uh, if you're really afraid of flying objects, you might want to stand up towards the outside. All right, so secondly, I'm not here to sell you anything. I have nothing here for you to buy. What I want to present to you is an opportunity to learn about your health. I have experienced better health in the past 10 years and that is what I want to sell you. I also want to ask your permission. I am not an expert in cancer. I am an expert in skincare and I'm an expert in my own health. So I ask for your permission to continue to talk about the topic of cancer and how it could relate to you. I believe that health begins at conception. This to me is when health begins. This, my friends, is what happens. You get one healthy cell that then divides into two healthy cells if everything is correct. And that further continues to divide to become this little guy. So I believe health begins at conception. I'm Trina Felger. I'm a registered nurse. I'm a nurse anesthetist. I'm the owner of Primal Life Organics, where I created a way to feed your skin in a way that no one else has thought of with food. It only makes sense. I'd love to educate you about health, wellness, diet, exercise, all sorts of avenues that you can take to improve your health. And then what ends up happening is you look younger, you feel better, and you live longer. So one day, I woke up. I was 39 years old, and I woke up. I was healthy, and I was happy, or at least what I defined as health 10 years ago, which is different than today. But there was something that happened that made me question everything around me. I wasn't sick, I didn't have a disease, I didn't have cancer, I had a miscarriage. I was seven weeks along and I miscarried and that changed my life forever. I'm a nurse and I know that those things happen, I know it could be genetic. But I couldn't help to think that there could be something in my environment that could be causing issues inside me that I wasn't aware of. So I started looking at everything. I was really, really lucky. I got pregnant right away again. I was at seven weeks. And I was at the same point where I miscarried. And of course, running through my head is, will I ever be a mother for more than seven weeks? So I was really, really, really aware of everything around me. And so one morning I'm getting up for work and I'm putting my moisturizer on. It was from a company that I trusted, some company that I felt was healthy and natural. And I happened to glance down at the moisturizer and I read the ingredients probably for the first time in my life. And I realized that there were things in there that were toxins. I knew that if it wasn't good for me, it sure as heck wasn't good for this guy. What I now know is that after my research, this is the placenta in case anybody's wondering. <laughs> They have found toxins from commercial skincare in the cord blood of newborn babies. So instantly, I 
unplugged from Nick Cosmo. I completely ditched everything. In fact, that morning I went to my kitchen and I thought, those women in Europe are beautiful. What are they putting on their skin? Olive oil, and that's what I did. I put olive oil on my skin and I went to work with just olive oil on my skin. I was terrified, I was petrified, I'm 39 years old. I don't want to look older. I, I had acne, but I wanted, I was, I was afraid. I was afraid to give up what Big Cosmo was selling me. But I also realized that it was for my health and the health of someone else. So I started to dabble and I started to make my own products and what I realized is that as I was feeding my skin nutrients, my skin was looking better. And that didn't happen by mistake. So I started creating my own products and that's how my company, Primal Life Organics, was born. I'm not curing cancer, I'm not abolishing disease, but I like to think that I'm not contributing to it. That's my daughter, by the way. Mia, she's about nine years old right now. So I'm creating a new way of thinking, a new way of feeding your skin. And I want you to think about this. Your skin is your largest organ. It's the organ that you can see. Every one of us here has approximately 79 organs, give or take, if we've taken out any of them. But everybody has approximately 79 organs. Your skin is the organ that you can see. And it's speaking volumes to you. If it's dehydrated, if it has wrinkles, if you're prematurely aging, if you have any skin conditions like eczema, rosacea, acne, it's an indication of the other organs on your insides that you cannot see. If your skin is dehydrated, it's a good possibility that the rest of your organs are also dehydrated. So I want you to stop and think about that, that your skin is speaking volumes, so take a look at it. So today I define health a lot differently. I have a more well-rounded view of health. And I wanna start by talking about, a little bit about cancer and skin care and what I like to say is sick care. Because in front of me are a bunch of products that we use every day. And unfortunately, some of the ingredients that are in here are known carcinogens, they're neurotoxins, they're endocrine disruptors, they cause allergies, they can cause reproductive problems, including low sperm count, liver and kidney disease, and skin conditions. And there are some things that we don't know. So we don't know what our internal environment is, but I'm gonna tell you this. There are some things that we do know for certain. We do know that some of the ingredients in skincare cause cancer. We know that. So why are we playing around with that? So in 2017, this year, 1.6 million people will be diagnosed with cancer. One in five adults every single day are expo exposed to the top five cancer-causing ingredients. Hydroquinone, ethylene dioxide, 1,4-dioxane, formaldehyde, nitrosamine, polycystic aromatic hydrocarbon, and acrylamides. One in five are exposed to every single one of those that are known, that are known to cause cancer. So I want to bring it home a little bit more. Every single day this year, 4,600 people will be diagnosed with cancer. 1,650 will die. Every minute, three new cases of cancer are diagnosed and one person will lose their battle. So I have to ask you, how exposed are you? 
If you're female and sitting in this audience, the chances are you use approximately 12 beauty products every single day. For many of us, we use up to 16, if not more. Men are a little bit smarter. They use about six, and that's probably because they're not using makeup or as many styling agents. So women are exposed to about 168 unique ingredients every day, and men on average 85. It affects your reproductive system. Endocrine disruptors are responsible for your hormones. Part of your hormonal system is your reproductive system. At birth, these little guys have immature immune systems and they have a higher body surface area, which means they have a higher fat content and they absorb things more quickly and more readily. So I want to talk a little bit about skin diet versus food, the things that you eat. Because really what we're kind of being told is that there's only a little bit in here. It's okay, you're going to be fine. There's only a little bit. It's not enough to hurt you. But I want to introduce something to you. I want you to understand that the way you ingest something when you eat it, such as an apple, is a little bit different than the way you ingest your skincare your skin food. So when you ingest something through your mouth, you have protective mechanisms inside of you that help break down toxins and eliminate them out of your body. So when you eat something, your saliva starts to break it down. It goes to your stomach and you have digestive juices that will start to break it down. And then it goes to your liver and the fat soluble ingredients, which is what these toxins are, are converted to water soluble and they're excreted in your urine. So chances are, or hopefully chances are, they're not traveling to the rest of your body. You're trying to eliminate them. Unfortunately, with skincare, it's a little bit different. With skincare, the nurse in me has to go back and relate this to something that we're sort of familiar with. There's transdermal medications like nitroglycerin patch on someone such as nitroglycerin in about six to eight minutes you will see a drop in the blood pressure. Same thing with skincare. You have to think of it in the same way. So there's channels or micro channels in your skin that allow things to go through it. So your skincare is going through your skin. What's really interesting is that once it gets into your skin and into your tissue it can be absorbed into your bloodstream, your blood vessels. Your blood vessels don't go to your liver. They travel all through your body. They go to your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, your brain. They like to settle in your fat tissue. Your brain is made up of a lot of fat tissue. Sometimes these chemicals can sit in your fat tissue for a long time and cause some damage. So, I ask you to evaluate your own skincare routine. So, I want to do a little exercise with everyone. So, I have a bunch of products in front of me, and I'm going to put them, and we're going to make a little bit of soup here, and we're going to see what we come up with. So, as I go through these, I want everyone to count how many products you've used in the past 24 hours. All right. So if you took a shower, you probably used some sort of soap, so body soap. You washed your hair, you used some sort of shampoo. Some conditioner for your hair. Some hand soap, you probably all used some hand soap. Deodorant, at least once. In a hot day like this, maybe more. Uh, body moisturizer hand sanitizer, you can't go anywhere and not find this stuff anymore. Face wash, if you use something different. Hair gel, or any kind of hair styling agents. Sunscreen, maybe not today, but yesterday. Face moisturizer, 
something that you moisturize your face with. Here's some eye cream, acne treatment. Did we brush our teeth? So we probably brushed our teeth with something that might have looked like that. Mouthwash. Ladies, some foundation. If we put any kind of makeup on, foundation. We've got some blush, some eyeshadow. All right. So I've got a lot of good things in here, I think. Let's find my spoon. Okay, we're gonna mix this all up. All right, so I wanna mix this all up. Make some soup in here. See what we come up with. All right, so I need everyone to stand up for me. All right, so you have your number inside. Anyone that used less than five products that I mentioned, have a seat. So if you've used less than five in the past 24 hours, have a seat. We're gonna see who's the last one standing. Did you guess that? All right, less than eight, sit, and everybody else stay standing. How about 10, less than 10, sit. All right, 12, less than 12, 12 or less. 14. 15, sit, if you have 15. Oh, the three of you, stand back up. I think that was everybody, okay. Out of the three of you, I need a volunteer. All right, come on up. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna read my soup over here. Stand, about right there is good, all right. Can you catch? Okay, what's your name? Misty, this is Misty. Thank you, Misty. So you use 15. All right, we're gonna see what you ate today. All right, we're gonna see what your diet is today. All right, so I'm mixing up your soup. I just want you to know it's a little gooey and watery. Hope you're not afraid of that. All right. This is what Misty had today for lunch, maybe breakfast. All right, Misty, formaldehyde? That was in there. Hold on, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look like my guy. Okay, it's okay, don't worry about it, because there's not much in there, so I'm sure you're gonna be okay. Just don't worry, you're fine. All right, lead? That one doesn't look too good either. Mineral oil was in there, I'm sorry. How you feeling? It's okay, it's all right, don't worry, you're fine. I promise you, it's okay, you're gonna be all right. We'll fix it. Propylene glycol, that's not good. Sorry. We got some silicone. Oh, 1,4 dioxide. You know what? I'm really, really sorry. I hate to do this to you, but you get two. Oh, you can, oh, that's okay. Just leave them. Just leave them. It's quite better that way. You know why you got two for 1,4 dioxane? All right, I'm gonna tell you. Okay, 1,4 dioxane is a byproduct of some of these other ingredients. So it's in there, but you'll never see it listed on the ingredient list. Yeah, so that you got two for that, sorry. All right, oh, fragrance is really, really bad. Sorry, we get two more for that. Because that was in almost every one, just so you know. Hang on, we're not done. Hydroquinone, yeah. Wait, there's more, all right. Parabens, there was a lot of those in there. I should have given me like six. Oxybenzone, phthalates, DEA, do you know where this is going? Okay, we're gonna fix it. Talc, triclosan, I'm sorry. SLS, it's probably in a bunch of those. Can you catch two? Let's try. I like it. I'll just leave it. You're good. All right, wait, you're not done. Did you know that there was probably about 75% water in there? Okay. Did you know that when I looked at all those, you didn't drink good water? That was tap water. Tap water is probably listed as the number one ingredient on most skincare products. Let me tell you something about tap water. It most likely contains cancer-causing ingredients, including disease.
disease causing bacteria, heavy metals, gasoline solvents, synthetic chemicals, uh, disinfectant byproducts, radioactive substances. I don't think you can catch a lot more, can you? But I guess I'll hold on. We're going to finish this off. All right, sorry. Okay, so here's the deal. You weren't alone, and I want you to feel okay because we're going to fix that. So what I need you to do is toss those out and share them with your friends. Because they all, except for maybe the gentleman back there, maybe he didn't use any, but everybody else gets to share in your cancer. By the way, that's what cancer looks like, guys. That's uh, exactly <laughs> that's what cancer does. It knocks you on your head. And, and when you're not looking, it knocks you on your butt. And these guys are about one million times the size of cancer cells, so it's okay, don't worry. You can keep one for yourself. Here, here, pick, pick, pick these guys. No, you get to keep one. You have to keep one. So aren't they cute? I had to steal them all back from my kids. They, they stole them from me. Okay, I appreciate it. You can sit down. We're, we're, we are going to fix you. Take one. You get to take one. So we are going to fix you. Who didn't get one? I uh, oh, can get it fixed. All right. So we are going to fix you guys. Don't worry. There is hope. All right, let me talk a little bit about what cancer is really fast. So really, what it boils down to is cancer is a mutation in the DNA. Something happens in the DNA, and unfortunately, it can't be fixed on most cases. A lot of times in your own DNA, on a normal cell, if there's a problem in your DNA, there's little things that go in there and can fix the DNA. But in cancer, that can't happen. What's really important to know is that we all have these kind of mutated cells in us, okay? So these, this is a normal part of life. What happens when I talked about some things happen for certain that we know, some things are certain and some things are uncertain. The certain things we know is that this soup, what I like to call toxic soup, those things cause cancer, so we do know that's for certain. What we don't know is what your internal environment is like. And it's your internal environment that will affect what happens to this guy. Will he live or will he die? Will he multiply and make friends or will he die? So, we're gonna talk about your internal environment and how you can change that and manipulate that to make it more in your benefit or more likely that these guys won't show up in your life. So, mutations in genes allow a cell to grow really rapidly and sometimes it prevents it from halting growth, or from stopping the fast, rapid growth. So a lot of times, these guys, a normal cell will divide and divide, but it won't, it won't continue to overly grow. But cancer doesn't know when to stop. And when mistakes happen in the DNA, it, does, it can't get repaired. So that's really the problem. There's two basic types of mutations. You can be born with mutations, genetic mutations. That's less common. Most common is after birth, and all the things that we're exposed to. And some of the things that cause cancer after birth include stress, smoking, radiation, viruses, cancer-causing ingredients, obesity, hormones, chronic inflammation, and lack of exercise can all cause uh, after-birth mutations, if you will. Also included in that is too much acid in your, in your body. I'm gonna talk more about that and how that gets produced, what you can do to change that. Pollution is something we don't think about, but just air pollution, that's something that's not really something you can control to any degree and uh, topical carc uh, carcinogens, which include your skincare, tap water, things like that. So when we talk about your internal environment, the thing I wanna talk about really quick is your diet, because that's probably the biggest factor, something you can change. And in our diet today, now if you're at this event, this might not, maybe you've made these changes already, uh, but for the standard American, the diet is high in meat, grains, sugar, cola, and soft drinks. 
So a diet that you want to uh, gravitate toward would be high in fruits and vegetables. We're gonna go into that more. It's really about acid-based balance. So we're gonna get a little chemistry here. So your normal pH is about 7.35 7 to 7.45. When it's below 7.35, you're acidotic. These guys love that. When you are above 7.45, you're alkaline. These guys love that. An acidic pH causes proteins to be denatured and digested. Enzymes lose their ability to function and death can also occur. So cancer, this guy's really smart. He's super smart. We learned a lot about this guy. So this guy likes to create his own environment. So once you get some of these guys and they start to reproduce, they create their own environment. There's been research that shows there's a link between body pH and cancer. Cancer thrives in an, in an acidic environment. A normal cell likes an alkaline environment and this guy can't survive an alkaline environment. But this guy is really smart because he produces lactic acid. So he's literally producing the environment he wants to live in. People that have cancer, unfortunately, they live with more acid in their body naturally because these guys produce acid. Acidity is also another, it's the underlying cause, not just of cancer, but of other conditions or other diseases, including heart disease, degenerative diseases, arthritis, fibromyalgia, um, and things like that. So Dr. Morishita wrote a book called Hidden Truth of Cancer. And what he, what he stated is that when your body, when your blood starts to become acidic, this is how your body tries to compensate for itself. When your body starts to become acidic, it will force toxins into your cells. It forces toxins into cancer cells. That way your blood can try to remain more alkaline. It's a compensation method. This causes your cells to actually become more toxic and more acidic. And there's two things that can happen. These guys either die because there's too much acidity, too much toxicity, so they die. They actually rupture, which then causes the environment to become more toxic. Or these guys mutate. And it's when they mutate and they start producing more of their own is when you start to have problems. So abnormal cells are called malignant cells and they do not correspond with brain function or your own DNA memory code. And malignant cells grow indefinitely and without cause and that is what cancer is. So I want to talk for a second about fragrance because there was a lot of fragrance in my soup as well. Almost every product has fragrance in it. So I just want to make you a little bit more aware if you're not aware of the fact that fragrance is listed on a, on a, a bottle as fragrance and not as the ingredients that make up that fragrance because it's a trade secret and companies don't have to disclose their trade secret. And there's a database of around 3,000 chemicals that they can pull from to make that fragrance or that scent, most of those are harmful ingredients or chemicals. Here's the real problem of the eye opener. If you think you're doing yourself a favor by buying something that's unscented, unfortunately, all of those things in my toxic suit smell so bad that they have to put fragrance in to neutralize that scent and call it unscented. Otherwise, it would smell so bad you wouldn't wear it. So even though you think that something might be unscented, please flip it over and make sure that it doesn't still have the word fragrance on it. We know, these are some things that we do know, we do know that out of those 3,000 plus chemicals, they are neurotoxins, carcinogens, they cause loss of muscle control, brain damage, headache, memory loss, speech, hearing, and vision problems, and they can cause ketone accumulation in breast milk and fatty tissue. That guy doesn't, not too happy. 
So, enough about the bad, let's talk about the good and how Misty, was that Misty? She's gonna, we're gonna change Misty's life here. So we can restore your balance. This is how we're gonna restore your balance. There's a lot of ways you can do it. I'm gonna kind of talk a little bit about all of these. You can alkalize your pH via the foods that you eat. I'm gonna to talk to you for a second about apple cider vinegar in a minute because apple cider vinegar is something you can do so easy. It takes less than 10 minutes every day and it can change your life, not just prevent cancer, but a lot of other health benefits. Eating more fruits and vegetables. Other health practices, including exercise, meditation, sleep, they will help decrease the acid inside your body and improve the hormones that you do produce. Detoxification practices, including juicing, play, and supplements. I'm gonna talk a little bit about infrared heat. Sunlight and sauna is here. Um, so I'm gonna talk for a minute about what that and how that can improve your quality of life as well. Plant-based nutritional skincare, which is one of my favorite things. And water filtration, because it's so important to filtrate the heavy metals and not let that penetrate your skin or your body. Um, and you can do that with a whole house filtration system. If you can't do that, you can always buy um, a shower head filtration because a lot of times the way you're building those is when you're showering. So that will greatly decrease your uh, toxicity. All right, here's an example of some alkaline foods just to get an idea of what you should be filling your cart with. Fruits and vegetables, anything green really, um, as long as it's not synthetic green. Avocado, beans, raw nuts, um, seaweed, vegetable juices, sprouts, miso, and apple cider vinegar. If you're sitting here today, a lot, uh, good chance that you ditched most of these 27 foods. The ones I put in red, I put in red because even on the paleo diet or some healthy diet, those are the ones that we usually still consume. And it's okay, you know, it's moderation. Uh, with roasted nuts, I would say go with raw nuts because raw nuts are much healthier for you. Coffee, go bulletproof or some other caveman coffee or something else that's here. Um, those are better options. Really quick about the apple cider, because I know um, some people might not be familiar with this. This is something I did last summer. I did a 30-day apple cider vinegar challenge where I went every day on Facebook, and I did a shot a day, and I announced a health, health benefit of apple cider vinegar. I had 30 days worth. Um, I do have the content at the end of this. I'll be, you'll be able to actually get my slideshow, and you'll be able to actually access that. So um, stay with me. But as far as the apple cider vinegar goes, even though apple cider vinegar is acidic, it produces an alkalizing effect in your body. And it also has a high mineral content, and that supports a healthy cellular function. It contains calcium, chlorine, copper, iron, magnesium, all sorts of minerals that you actually need to have good cellular health. Even better, as far as cancer goes, let's get more specific towards cancer. There's been research that has showed that apple cider vinegar or vinegar is able to kill cancer cells or at least slow their growth. And that's also true for prostate cancer. So in addition to all of that, apple cider vinegar it just also aids in detoxifying the body. And when you do a shot, trust me, it's going to clean out your colon. And it helps reduce your chances of prostate and colon cancer. Very quickly, uh, to do an apple cider vinegar shot, you don't want to take it straight. You do want to dilute it. You at least dilute it one to one. If you can't tolerate that, if it's too sharp for you, you can dilute it even more. You can add things to it, uh, like honey or lemon. I give, during my challenge, I do give a lot of recipes that you can do. And one of my tips is to make a big batch. Since it's like a one-to-one -one mix, you just literally make it, put it in your fridge, and every day, I will actually pour my shot before I go to bed, put it in my bathroom, because it's the first thing I do when I wake up is I take my shot. So you just dilute it down at least one-to-one, -one, and it has numerous health benefits, including weight loss. The, the really cool thing about apple cider vinegar, just a side note, is that apple cider vinegar contains the pectin, and it's pectin in apples. Whenever you eat an apple, 
Um, I'm always like, oh gosh, I'm gonna eat an apple, fill, fill me up, and it really does, it fills you up. It's the pectin in the apple that fills you up. And that is in apple cider vinegar. By the way, you want the apple cider vinegar that looks just like that, that is real cloudy. It's got the mother in it, and the mother is what has all of the nutrients in it, so that's what you want. You want it cloudy. But the pectin is what sends that signal to your brain that you're full, stop eating. Literally, when you do this challenge, I, one thing that amazes people is that that is literally true. If you do your shot 20 minutes before you eat, when you sit down to eat, you'll probably take half of your plate and be done, and literally you won't even be interested in the rest. I don't care how good the food is, you're gonna be like, yeah, I'm done. That's what happens, that's the pectin. All right, here we go, sunlight news. So I have a sunlight sauna. I love my sunlight and sauna. Thank you, Andrea. Um, and this isn't an ad for sunlight. I do want to tell you why the technology is there to improve your health. So when my husband and I decided about five years ago, we were just gonna do things to invest in our health because the health insurance was just not going in that direction. We decided that everything we did for ourselves was going to be an investment. And this is one of those things that we decided was so worth it because of its benefits to invest in our health. And not just us, the health of our kids, because our kids get in it and love it just as much. But the infrared cleanses the body and eliminates waste through the skin. And it's one of the most effective means to detoxify the body. It also rejuvenates cellular, your cellular health, and promotes a vibrant and disease-free life. Radiating heat actually penetrates your body tissue, whereas moist heat, like in a moist sauna, goes around your body, so you don't really get the internal effect. The effect you want from the sauna is you want it to raise your internal temperature. Sitting in a regular sauna is not gonna inter raise your internal temperature. What's really cool, as far as cancer goes, and actually we were just talking yesterday, I was talking to Andrea and Connie, uh, there's new information and more really cool technology that's coming out that's gonna be injectables with infrared. Um, but infrared sauna treatments are selectively toxic to cancer cells. They don't affect your regular healthy cells, they're toxic to, your, to uh, cancer cells themselves. And it's the hyperthermic effects that actually kill malignant cells. These guys hate it. They're like, keep me away from infrared heat because I can't survive. These guys are just as happy as can be. Cancer cells, I like this, are hyperthermically challenged. <laughs> So this just, this just uh, goes to show you a better depiction of the difference between the heat and how the infrared technology will actually penetrate your cells. So that's why my husband and I decided this was actually something we wanted to invest in because it's an investment. It's something you can get in. We do it, uh, he does it seven days a week. I try to, I do it at least four or five days a week and it's 30 minutes of my time in my box is what I call it. Okay, so let's go back to skincare. We can help Misty out a little bit here. Are you feeling a little better? So, so, all right. Don't worry, we'll get you covered. You'll be okay. So your skin is your largest organ. It's the organ you can see. If you're not happy with the way it looks, take a look at what you're feeding it. It really should get fed the same diet you're feeding your, your insides. Really, it, it's getting the same diet, whether you think about it or not, whether you realize it or not. It is actually getting the same diet that you see in your insides. Let me give you an example. So you go out to dinner, you have a couple too many drinks, right? You get up the next day and you're real cloudy, your brain's going, yeah, that wasn't so smart. Your liver's hurting, shouting, going, oh my gosh, don't do that again for at least a week. Your blood vessels are like, I'm so thirsty, I need something to drink, right? So everything on the inside screaming. Take a look in the mirror, I know you don't want to, you're like, oh my God, I look horrible, right? Yeah, your skin is telling you I'm dehydrated, I'm sallow, I don't look good, I have bad color. So your skin is telling you exactly what your insides feel. So it's just really important that we actually stop and look and say, yeah, we, we really should care about what we're putting on our skin. 
So we need to provide the right environment for ourselves because we want these guys to live. And even though we know some of these guys are gonna be hanging around, we want to make sure that they don't survive and that they can't produce their own environment to multiply. So detox is really good. I, I promote detox now. It's nothing that I promoted 10 years ago because I really wasn't that knowledgeable about it, but I think detox is really important. So the sauna will promote detox, but there's this, I, I put a couple different ways you can do detox, but let me go into one of the reasons you want to detox. One of the reasons you really want to detox is because you want to get rid of the heavy metals. So heavy metals can be found in a lot of things in the environment. They're usually the things like cadmium, mercury, lead, benzene, things like that. They're found in skincare. Like I said, that's usually tap water. There are some companies that put purified water, but most likely it's tap water. Uh, drinking water, um, and when you're showering is the other way that you get the, top, the heavy metals from water. There's foods that contain it, including anything with high fructose corn syrup, as well as some fish. I like to talk about bentonite as an internal cleanse. Now there's other ways to cleanse. There's juicing, there's supplements, there's things like that. Um, people don't think about bentonite. So I want to tell you how simple it is and open your eyes to it. Uh, bentonite clay, you, have, you just have to make sure you get food grade. That's all. But bentonite clay helps increase your immunity, reduce inflammation, fight disease and cancer, and it supports healthy, healthy cellular fun function. Not only that, not only does it take things away, I'm gonna tell you in a minute how it does that, but it also puts things back in, like the things that you need, like the good minerals that you need, like calcium, silica, magnesium, things like that, potassium. So in its natural state, this is how it works. Bentonite clay has a negative charge. This is the law of attraction, opposites attract. So bentonite clay has a negative charge. Toxins have a positive charge, so they like to bind. And it's a strong bind, a strong connection there. So once it's bound, it usually just carries it with it. So whether you're brushing your teeth with my Dirty Mouth Tooth Powder, which is a great way to detoxify your mouth, or you're doing an internal cleanse or a cleanse on your skin with, with it, it's going to bind, and it will bind all the way through and eliminate it. Um, through your uh, feces. All right, this just shows you the different ways that you can use bentonite clay. So if you're gonna do an internal cleanse, super simple, which is why I like it, I try to do an internal cleanse at least once a month, and I usually do three to five days. It's really not that big of a deal. It's not like other programs where you have to to five to 10 days and it's an all day thing. So this is really easy, it's an easy takeaway. You just mix one teaspoon of bentonite clay with two to four ounces of water. It tastes like you're drinking dirt, you are. It is what it is, uh, but it's not that bad. You can take it once a day, you can take it twice a day, you can take it three times a day, up to three times a day, it just depends on how much you want to take. If you take it three to five days, once a month, you should be good, you'll be able to get some of those heavy metals out. You might feel sluggish at first because you're pulling some of those metals in uh, to your bloodstream and things like that, but you're gonna give it a day or two and you're gonna feel so much better. You can also put it on the skin as uh, like a mask and you can put it in your bath water too. That's another good way to detoxify. So while we're talking about pH, um, acid-base balance, and your skin, I just wanna throw this out there because this is really good information for people. Um, your skin actually has more of an acidic pH. It likes to be around 5.5. That's where it's gonna look its healthiest, look clear, and it's gonna resist the bad bacteria that can sometimes cause the issues that we see like acne and rosacea and some of those conditions. If your face is dry or your skin is dry and prematurely aging, there's a good chance that your skin is too alkaline. If your skin is acidic, it's probably gonna be oily. You might even have problems with acne. Sometimes the problem is that the toxic soup likes to destroy your natural bacteria, it likes to destroy your sebum, which contains your natural bacteria, and sometimes it strips that away. So you lose your natural protective mechanism. 
I've created the products that leave your natural bacteria in place, your natural sebum in place, so that that doesn't happen. If your skin is around 5.5, you'll be radiant. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about your diet, when you're feeding your, your skin. So your diet, your goal should be this. Let's not make it unrealistic, so I'm gonna see if you can get back to normal. So 80% is a good goal. If you're gonna eat 80% good, then you want, you will have, uh, when you don't eat good, your body can compensate and get rid of the bad stuff. Same thing for your skincare. When you're using good skincare, when you expose yourself to hand soap or sanitizer, it's okay, your body can compensate, it can destroy it, it can work. So let's turn those cancer cells into healthy cells. So if these are the seven most alkaline foods. These are the things you really want to put in your diet every day as much as you can. When you are eating a more alkaline diet, and there's plenty of information out there guys on alkaline diets, so I'm not gonna necessarily go into everything, but you'll say goodbye to low energy, poor digestion, extra pounds, aches and pains, and disease, and you're going to say hello to reduce fiber, mental clarity, better overall health, and a leaner body. And it's really all about the pH of your blood. So like I said, there are things that we know for certain, like on my toxic soup, there are things that we're not sure about, but we can help fix. So I just wanna help everybody get your beauty back. So I'm gonna make something here. So this is what you want your skincare to look like when you're looking at those ingredients. So I've got a little bit of olive oil. We put some olive oil in there. All right, essential oils are really, really good. They're healing, they have a lot of anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, antibacterial. They help rejuvenate your cells. They also help with inflammation and redness. You want foods, here's lavender, herbs, clays are really good things like that, anything that looks like that is going to be really good. So that is what you want to look for. That, my friends, when you mix it all up and you pour it in the bottle. Let's go down there. So that, my friends, is nutritional skincare. And that is what's gonna feed your body from the outside so we can get rid of the, one of the reasons that things don't go so well. All right, so it's really not about your health. This is your health. It's really not just about diet and exercise. I learned that in the past 10 years. It's not about mindset. It's not about meditation. It's not about pH balance. It's not about skincare. It's not about hyperthermia. It's not about detox. It's about everything. It's about all of that. It's called a lifestyle, and that's what it's about. So, we are going to help Misty. We're gonna turn those cancer cells into healthy cells. So, really quick, everybody that has a cancer cell, I want you to look at that guy, feel him. I want you to take his mouth, there's a little zipper there. Be careful, there's a little gift in there for you. So don't spill your gift. I want you to unzip it, turn him around, because through a lifestyle change, you literally can turn your cancer cells into healthy cells. Isn't that adorable? Got it? Everybody get it? You're all in, right? Everybody's all in? You got this? You got this. Okay, so really quick, I wanna tell you guys, I wanna remember those people uh, that lost their battle while we were talking here today. I've been here for about an hour, and in the hour that I've been standing here, 180 people have been diagnosed with cancer and 60 people have died in the hour that you spent with me, okay? So it's real, and it's a way of life. There's ways to stay connected with me. I'm going to, um, if you want, you can text love PLO to that phone number, 7678-506-7543. I will be emailing you this presentation, so you don't have to worry about taking notes. You can get this presentation. You will also get an invite to the episode of Vinegar Challenge and any webinars and things like that that I do produce. 
And I do have about five minutes, I think, for questions, if anybody has any questions. Yes. Oh, you're throwing back. You don't want them. You can't throw him back looking like that. You have to throw him back looking like this. But, yeah, I do want these back. I do need these back. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for me? Comments? I'll take comments, too. Is there any questions? Yes. I can hear you. Yeah. Clay is really, it's really neutralizing and it's not going to affect your pH. It's going to pull the toxins, it's really gentle and it's just gonna pull the toxins. So it's not, and if you moisturize with a good moisturizer, you'll be good. It's not gonna pull bad stuff, it pull, literally pulls the toxins out of your skin. It, it'll help decrease inflammation a little bit, so yeah.